In the previous episode, Estelle, accompanied by Velian, entered the jungle to search for special herbs. Exhausted, she sat near a tree and suddenly, Kaizen appeared. Estelle was surprised and questioned his presence, to which Kaizen responded that he was there to help due to the dangers in the woods. Estelle, shocked, argued that they were close to the castle and Velian was with her. Kaizen questioned Velian's ability to protect her, prompting Estelle to realize that she couldn't focus on her task with him around. To distract Kaizen, Estelle received a white flower from him, thinking it was medicinal. However, when Kaizen explained that he got it based on the doctor's advice for fever, Estelle felt disappointed as they were regular flowers. Contemplating Kaizen's intentions, she considered the strategy of distracting him, similar to how Velian was helping her. Despite her disappointment, Estelle requested Kaizen to look for medicinal herbs with shorter stems and fewer flowers. Continuing their search, Estelle and Kaizen explore the vegetation, and after a short while, Kaizen presents a plan inquiring if it's what Estelle is looking for. Displeased, Estelle approaches, stating that the petals should be smaller. Kaizen acknowledges and proceeds to another set of plants, asking if these meet her criteria. Estelle responds with another yes. Meanwhile, Velian arrives, eager to show what he found. Surprised by Kaizen's presence with Estelle, Velian hesitates but eventually leaves the bundle of herbs for Estelle, making a quick exit. Estelle reassures Kaizen, noting that many flowers share similar appearances and shouldn't feel discouraged. In response, Kaizen expresses curiosity about when she acquired such knowledge. Estelle reveals that during her grandfather's time, there was an apothecary nearby, whom she befriended and the apothecary taught her some medicinal insights. However, due to her responsibilities in managing the manor, she couldn't delve deep into the study of medicine. Kaizen expresses regret about the missed opportunity. Estelle turns to look at him and says that he would have excelled in medicine, given his proficiency in everything. Estelle recalls a past event that took place eight years ago, when Kaizen was the crown prince. During the celebration of Kaizen's 18th birthday in the hunting grounds, a man approaches him, expressing honor in hosting such an event in the forest. The man mentions a local legend about a pond in the middle of the forest, said to have a fairy capable of granting wishes of love. Kaizen, with a skeptical thought, questions the credibility of such legends, dismissing it as nonsense and questioning if anyone truly believes in such stories. Estelle, intrigued by the local legend, listens to the man's tale about a person who once loved a woman as beautiful as her. The man begins describing a meadow, but as he mentions it, the frozen lake beneath the snow starts cracking. Kaizen, realizing the danger, attempts to warn but eventually jumps toward Estelle just as the ice breaks, causing both of them to fall into the icy lake. In the palace, Kaizen urgently brings Estelle back, instructing the maids to call a doctor. After a medical examination, it's determined that Estelle has developed a fever. The maids discuss the circumstances, questioning why she was at the lake in such weather. Kaizen recalls the forest legend about a fairy in a pond that grants wishes of love, expressing skepticism about its existence. Later, Kaizen, prompted by a servant, acknowledges the late hour and decides to leave, expressing his intention to return the next day to Estelle. The following morning, Kaizen is on his way to Estelle's room, but she is alarmed when she learns of his visit and hurriedly asks the maid to help her get ready. Despite her weakened state, Estelle is determined to face Kaizen. However, when Kaizen opens the door, a guard suggests he enter, but Kaizen surprises them both by suggesting they continue the hunt, deviating from the earlier plan to avoid hunting that day. In the present, we see Kaizen assisting Estelle by offering his jacket, expressing concern for her well-being. Estelle appreciates his gesture and thanks him. As Estelle resumes her search for herbs, Kaizen discovers the required herb and informs her. Estelle acknowledges the fine and Kaizen expresses his relief. Velian returns, signaling it's time to head back and Kaizen checks if Estelle has found everything she needed. Velian confirms his success, prompting them to leave the forest. Estelle enters her room and is surprised to find it completely redecorated. The maid explains that it was ordered by his majesty. Estelle observes the room, feeling as though it has been rebuilt from scratch. Meanwhile, Theor excitedly informs Estelle that his room has also changed, expressing joy over Vlyn having a bed now. He loves his new room. Estelle, acknowledging the changes, requests the maid to watch over Theor and mentions she will be back soon before leaving. Estelle, having successfully prepared medicine and eye drops from the gathered herbs, returns to Theor, Surprised to find Kaizen with Theor, she questions his presence. Kaizen explains that he came to invite her to dinner and ended up playing with Theor, who fell asleep during their time together. Estelle apologizes for any trouble caused and offers to take Theor to his room. Despite her apologies, Kaizen reassures her that he enjoyed the time spent with Theor. However, Theor, still in his sleep, calls out for his mother. Kaizen, surprised by Theor's mention of Mama, questions Estelle about it. She confirms that Theor occasionally calls out to his parents despite being aware that he once had them. Kaizen expresses his sympathy, 
acknowledging the tragedy of not being able to see one's parents. Estelle, comforting herself and her dog Vlyn, reassures that everything will be okay. The next morning, Estelle wakes Theor and informs him that it's time to leave. Theor is so drowsy questions if it's already morning. Estelle confirms and mentions their departure today, urging him to use eye drops. Theor complies with a simple, okay. Estelle carefully administers the eye drops. Subsequently, they board a carriage, and as they set off, Estelle reflects on the journey, expressing relief that they have finally reached their destination, Dens Castle, where her grandfather awaits them. Once inside the palace, a maid guides them, leading to an emotional reunion as Theor rushes to hug his grandfather, who warmly welcomes him. Estelle, addressing a maid, asserts her responsibility for taking care of Theor from now on and allows the maid to take her leave. Turning to her grandfather, Estelle apologizes for the delay and inquires about his well-being. Grandpa assures her that he was treated well and had a young servant insistent on nursing him, which led to some humorous moments. As they share a moment of laughter, Grandpa questions the reason for their delay. Estelle opens up about the challenges they face but reassures him that everything is fine now. She expresses her intention to stay for a few more days before requesting to be sent home with Theor. Despite initial concerns, Grandpa eventually agrees and Estelle assures him that everything will work out. Estelle contemplates the need to send Theor back and realizes she requires Kaizen's permission for this. In the midst of her thoughts, Grandpa mentions someone else awaiting her. Puzzled, Estelle inquires about this person, and on the other side, Velian informs Kaizen about Duke Lestern's secret movement of funds. Kaizen acknowledges the information and decides it's time to address matters in the northern region, instructing Velian to alert Commander Lambert to leave forces northward. Kaizen, aware of the potential danger, suspects it might be a trap set by the rebellion, and takes strategic measures to safeguard against any threats. Velian acknowledges Kaizen's instructions and decides to inform Commander Lambert to stay close to the capital during the northern mission. However, he contemplates the potential consequences if the plan succeeds, realizing that Duke Lestern's betrayal would implicate Lady Estelle. According to the Empire's laws, direct relatives of a traitor are also sentenced to death. Meanwhile, Kaizen, observing a ball being prepared by Sir Roderick in honor of Kaizen's arrival at the castle, expresses disinterest in unnecessary events and instructs Velian to cancel the ball, emphasizing a focus on the mission at hand. Velian expresses surprise at the idea of having a ball, to which Kaizen responds affirmatively, allowing the ball to proceed. Kaizen then reflects on Velian's usual dislike for such events, but acknowledges Lady Estelle's past penchant for organizing balls. Despite uncertainty about whether Estelle would appreciate it now, Kaizen decides to go along with the ball. As they discuss this, there's a knock on the door and a servant informs Kaizen that Lady Florian has requested an audience. Kaizen, speculating that it might be related to her sister Marion, who is missing Grant's permission for Lady Florine to enter and discuss her concerns. Florine, the second daughter of the Minister of State, the Marquis of Cruzen, and a potential candidate for Empress, appears before Kaizen. She respectfully greets him and expresses her humility, apologizing for any perceived insolence. Florine conveys a message from her father, the Marquis, who apologizes profusely for not properly educating his daughter. He requests that Kaizen shows no mercy to Florine's sister, likely referring to Marion, indicating a grave matter or transgression committed by her sister. Kaizen contemplates Marcus Cruzen's decision to seemingly abandon his daughter, seeing it as a move to protect his status. He reflects on the similarity between the Marquis and the aristocrats, who prioritize their positions over familial bonds. However, Florine disagrees with her father's stance and expresses a willingness to see her sister forgiven. Intrigued, Kaizen listens as Florine presents a proposition, suggesting that there might be a unique solution or negotiation on the table. Estelle is astonished when she hears the name Hannah and realizes that it is her former personal maid who had disappeared from her life six years ago. Expressing her surprise and joy, Estelle instructs Hannah to return to the palace, assuring her that the Empress Dowager will take care of her. However, Hannah, seemingly distressed, expresses a desire to escape her current life. Estelle, reflecting on her search for Hannah over the years, now contemplates the mysterious person who kept her hidden and away from the palace. Estelle expresses her apologies to Hannah explaining that she had asked her grandfather to keep her whereabouts a secret. However, Grandpa reassures her, saying there's no need to apologize. Estelle reveals that she came as soon as she heard the news, expressing her deep desire to see Hannah again. Theor, curious about the situation, asks about Hannah, and Estelle introduces her as the person her grandfather mentioned. Estelle becomes momentarily anxious, realizing that Hannah knew Kaizen when he was Theor's age. However, Hannah warmly greets Theor and engages with him, making Estelle feel reassured about the situation. Hannah brings cookies for Theor and then asks if Estelle plans to return east once the matter with the will is resolved. 
Estelle confirms this, assuming that Hannah will continue working at the royal palace. However, to Estelle's surprise, Hannah expresses her desire to serve Estelle instead. Estelle is taken aback by this revelation. Hannah shares her regret about parting ways six years ago and emphasizes the loneliness she felt during her time at the royal palace. She earnestly requests Estelle not to leave her behind this time, expressing a deep desire to serve Estelle once again. Estelle reflects on the challenges Hannah might have faced as the personal maid of the deposed empress. Despite being too preoccupied with her own problems at the time, Estelle acknowledges the difficulty of Hannah's situation. When Hannah expresses her desire to serve Estelle again, Estelle agrees and welcomes her back, stating that she has already made up her mind. Hannah expresses gratitude, and Estelle thinks that hiring staff once her grandfather regains his pension is part of her plans. She feels reassured and trusts Hannah to be a valuable addition to her team. While Velian interrupts Estelle and requests her time to discuss Lady Marion. Estelle inquires about the matter and Velian explains that Lady Florian arrived with a formal request regarding Lady Marion. Florian's request is for her sister to be given the opportunity to formally apologize specifically to the victim Lady Estelle. Florian acknowledges the gravity of Lady Marion's offense and suggests that her fate be decided after the apology. Estelle listens to this in Kazan, reflecting on Florine's request, acknowledges that she seems to be better than her older sister. Kaizen, following Florine's reasoning, suggests that it would be proper for the victim, Estelle, to make the decision regarding Lady Marion's fate. He instructs Velian to ask Estelle if she accepts this responsibility. Kaizen also addresses Florine, stating that even if Estelle refuses to hear out Lady Marion, Florine should not hold it against her if she genuinely wishes to make amends. Estelle, reluctantly considering the potential consequences, decides to meet with Miss Marianne to discuss the matter, recognizing the prudence in not provoking someone who might become the Empress. In the next scene, we find Marianne in jail and Lyndon instructs her to come out following the Emperor's orders. Estelle, seeing Marianne's condition, expresses genuine shock and admits she didn't expect her to be treated so poorly. Marianne, in a somewhat apologetic tone, acknowledges her wrongdoing. Lyndon interjects, questioning if Marianne's apology is sufficient and expressing concern about her treatment. Estelle addresses Lyndon, asking if Marianne is not there to plead for mercy. Marianne clarifies that the decision on her fate lies with the Emperor, not Estelle, but she acknowledges that she might have gone too far. Estelle sternly confronts Marianne, accusing her of falsely accusing her of attempted poisoning, an act that could have resulted in severe consequences for Estelle and her entire family. She reflects on Marianne's lack of consideration for the potential consequences, deeming it even worse. Estelle mentions that the only reason she gave Marianne a chance was because of Florine's efforts, and if Marianne doesn't change her attitude, it would render Florine's efforts in vain. Estelle, after giving Marianne an opportunity to speak, instructs Sir Lyndon to escort Lady Marianne back. Despite Lyndon's actions, Marianne vehemently protests, expressing her disdain for Estelle as a deposed empress. At that moment, Kaizen arrives, expressing his disapproval of the situation and instructs Lyndon to take away the prisoner, Marianne. Lyndon complies, but Marianne addresses Kazan, seeking his attention. Kaizen, visibly angry, watches as Lyndon escorts Marianne back to her cell. Estelle, observing the scene, expresses concern, asking Kaizen not to treat Marianne too harshly, emphasizing her youth. Kaizen, however, dismisses Estelle's plea, stating that she is too soft. Estelle, surprised by the accusation, questions Kaizen's presence, asking if he's there to ensure she wasn't too lenient with Lady Marianne. Kaizen responds cryptically, leaving Estelle puzzled about his motives. Kaizen surprises Estelle by revealing that his visit is to see her grandfather. Estelle, taken aback, reflects on the day's events, feeling exhausted by the unexpected turn of events. Kaizen then addresses her grandfather, expressing a belated apology for inconveniencing people and acknowledging the honor of visiting in person. Grandpa reassures Kaizen, appreciating the concern and noting an improvement in his health. Estelle, observing Kaizen's caring side, reflects on how she hasn't seen this aspect of him in a while. She had initially perceived it as part of his gentlemanly facade, but the sincerity of his concern for her grandfather challenges her preconceptions. Kaizen inquires about Theora's whereabouts, and Estelle responds that he should be in his room, playing with the dog. Kaizen expresses his observation that Theor is sweet and well-mannered, suggesting he takes after his father. Grandpa agrees, humorously adding that Theor's good manners come from Estelle, as she is the one he takes after. This leads Estelle to contemplate the implications, realizing that the reference to the father is Sigmund, the Marquis's son. The mention of my child refers to Estelle, making Theor her son. Estelle humorously reflects on the relief that Theor doesn't take after Kaizen. Estelle reflects on the situation, wondering why Grandpa made comments that Kaizen might not understand. Kaizen responds, finding the remark a bit harsh, especially when referring to the boy's mother. This exchange leaves both of them surprised, 
Estelle realizes that Kazan believes Grandpa is insulting a commoner, unaware that the conversation involves Estelle herself. Grandpa, seemingly amused, expresses gratitude for Kazan's apparent concern for the boy's mother, creating a humorous misunderstanding. In contrast, Grandpa inwardly fumes, criticizing Kaizen for treating Estelle poorly yet showing concern for a fictional maid who isn't involved in Theor's care. Kaizen defends his concern by emphasizing that the one responsible for separating the boy is not the one currently taking care of him. In a tense exchange, Grandpa questions Kaizen, insinuating whether he believes Grandpa forced Estelle into their current circumstances. Estelle intervenes, urging both of them to stop. Grandpa diplomatically suggests that every family has its issues and advises Kazen to refrain from interfering. Kaizen expressing his disappointment implies that some issues are evident, acknowledging his misplaced trust in Grandpa's reputation as a war hero. Estelle feeling the strain implores Kazen to halt his propositions. Kaizen, determined to act in their best interest, insists that Estelle and Theor move to the capital, promising a manor, servants, and a nanny. Estelle vehemently rejects the idea, emphasizing her reluctance to relocate and urging Kazan to leave them in peace. In the midst of the conversation, Theor opens the door and enters the room. Concerned, he addresses Estelle as auntie. Estelle turns around, acknowledging Theor's presence. Kazan, realizing the upcoming ball, informs Estelle and expresses a desire for her to attend. Estelle, initially surprised, agrees and thanks Kazan for the invitation. Theor, excited, expresses his eagerness to join the ball after seeing it in a picture book. Kaizen affirms and acknowledges Theor's enthusiasm for dressing up and dancing at the ball. Estelle gently lifts Theor into her arms, telling him that he's a little too young to attend the ball, promising to take him when he's older. Theor, visibly shocked, reacts to this news. Kaizen interjects, agreeing that Theor is too young for the ball but offers to prepare a separate venue if Theor still wants to have an event. Excited, Fear asks if it's really possible, and Kazan assures him it is. Estelle then requests permission to visit the gardens, needing Kaizen's approval to enter. Kaizen agrees with a smile and suggests everyone go together. Grandpa expresses his agreement, and Estelle, turning to Theor, invites him to join them. Kaizen, Estelle, and Theor enter the garden, where Theor spots a frog in the pond. He then misses a pavilion and asks Estelle about it, thinking it might be a house. Estelle clarifies that it's a pavilion, explaining that it used to be a place to enjoy the pond, but is now a display room. Kaizen offers to show it to Theor, and excitedly, Theor agrees. As they approach the display room, they find it locked, prompting Kaizen to mention that the caretaker must be on a break, suggesting they return later. Theor, curious about the bowls and dishes inside, asks Estelle about them. She informs him that they are decorations meant for people to look at, emphasizing that they are not for playing. Theor agrees with an enthusiastic, okay. Continuing their stroll, Theor is captivated by the flowers in the garden, expressing his amazement. Estelle promises to create a flower bed for him when they return home and even suggests adding a small pond for fish. Overjoyed, Theor hugs Estelle. Kaizen, observing the family moment, offers to have any flowers Theor likes sent to him. Estelle, with a sense of independence, declines the offer, assuring Kaizen that if they ever need anything, he'll be the first to know. Kaizen agrees. Estelle reflects, anticipating a time when they can leverage this connection, especially during the upcoming ball where she plans to request Theor's return. Returning to the palace, Estelle and Theor are greeted by Grandpa. Estelle, concerned about the potential negative impression Kazan might have of her grandfather due to his remarks, questions the wisdom of such statements. Grandpa dismisses her worries, stating that Kaizen thinking of him as an old snob is inconsequential. He believes it's better for Kaizen to misunderstand the situation, making it more believable that he played a role in driving out Theor's mother. Estelle expresses her apology and takes responsibility, but Grandpa reassures her that enduring hardships for her and Theor is a small price to pay. As Estelle reminisces about the cherished memories with Grandpa and Theor, there is a tender moment between them. Grandpa expresses the weight of his losses, noting that his grandson Sigmund and his two children are no longer with him, emphasizing that Estelle and Theor are now his main source of familial connection. When Estelle mentions Fritz, Grandpa dismisses him, attributing the lack of contact to Estelle's father's interference and criticizing Fritz's submissive nature. In the midst of recalling the past, Kaizen approaches and Estelle, with concern, questions Grandpa's future plans, urging him not to be foolish and suggesting an apology to his father. Grandpa concedes the truth in her words, acknowledging the strained relationship with Fritz, as they discuss the unexpected visit from the Emperor, Grandpa expresses skepticism about the sincerity behind the Emperor's apparent concern for him. Estelle reassures Grandpa about the Emperor's sincerity, emphasizing his commitment to doing what's right. 
Despite Grandpa's skepticism, Estelle maintains that she isn't taking sides but acknowledges that the Emperor's involvement has inadvertently advanced her plan. She anticipates that refusing her request might be challenging in the public setting of a ball. Grandpa expresses concern for her well-being, to which Estelle reflects on the unexpected turn of events, recognizing the precarious position of a Lestern daughter who rejects the opportunity to become Empress. Despite the challenges, she insists that she's all right. Grandpa regrets his inability to assist her further and notes the surprising resemblance between Estelle and the Emperor after meeting him in person. Grandpa expresses concern about the possibility of Estelle's father realizing the truth, citing his cunning nature and frequent presence in the palace. Estelle reassures him, stating that she has no intention of taking Theor to the capital. Meanwhile, in jail, tensions rise between Florine and Marion. Marion is frustrated about still being incarcerated despite Florine's promise to help. Florine criticizes Marion's approach, urging patience and promising to think of a solution. Florine then directs his servant to provide Marion with proper food and clean up the surroundings, signaling her commitment to support her sister despite the challenges. Marion contemplates the possibility that Florine might not help due to their competition for the title of Empress. In frustration, she orders a servant to clean up the broken shards, threatening violence. The next day, Estelle wakes up to find a gift in her room. A maid informs her that the gifts are from His Majesty, who has prepared them for her attendance at the ball. The maid suggests trying on any dress she likes. Estelle, surprised by the thoughtful gesture, acknowledges the effort Kaizen put into arranging everything in just a day and expresses gratitude for the gifts. Meanwhile, Hannah apologizes for allowing the gifts into Estelle's room, stating she couldn't decline the offerings from His Majesty. Estelle reassures her and rather than dwelling on the intrusion, invites Hannah to help her choose a dress. However, Theor, surprising everyone, asks Estelle if His Majesty likes her. Estelle, taken aback, questions his statement and Theor innocently wonders if sending gifts is something people do for someone they like. Estelle clarifies to Theora that His Majesty sent the gifts because she doesn't have a dress for the ball, trying to dispel any misunderstanding. She then advises Theora not to make such comments, as they might cause trouble for others. Theora obediently goes to play outside with Lynn. Estelle, in her thoughts, expresses concern about potential rumors and questions why Kaizen continues to engage in such actions. A few days later, Theora expresses his eagerness to play in the garden again and Estelle, permitting him to do so, instructs the maid to ensure he stays close. The observation is made that Theora is outgoing compared to Master Seedmund, who was more reserved. Hannah apologizes for the comment, but Estelle reassures her. However, Estelle contemplates the inevitable need to reveal the truth to Hannah about Theora's eye color, especially once she moves in, as hiding it will become increasingly challenging. Estelle, expressing relief after completing a task, inquires about Theora's whereabouts. Hannah assures her that she will ask a maid to bring him back. However, when the maid arrives, she tearfully informs Estelle that Theor has disappeared. The maid explains that she briefly left him alone after someone called for her, and upon her return, Theor was no longer there. Apologizing profusely, she conveys her deep regret for the unfortunate situation. Hannah questions the maid, expressing disbelief that anyone else would have a reason to call her. The maid, invisibly distressed, explains that there was no one when she followed the voice. Hannah, determined to find Theor, offers to search for him but Estelle insists on accompanying her. Estelle instructs the maid to inform other staff members, urging them to spread out and join the search. In the garden, Estelle and Hannah call out for Theor, expressing their concern. Estelle reflects on the situation, noting that this is the second time Theor has gone missing, and the circumstances seem more suspicious this time. Estelle contemplates the possibility that someone might have attempted to kidnap Theor, possibly having discovered his true identity. The concern grows as they suspect a potential threat, Hannah reassures Estelle, addressing her by title. They decide to return to the palace urgently. As Estelle enters the palace, she encounters commotion among the maids. One of them apologizes for the disturbance, explaining that a vase in the pavilion was knocked over. Estelle wonders if this incident is related to Theora's disappearance and questions the likelihood of the vase falling just when Theora vanished. The suspense builds as they enter the pavilion and find something unexpected among the flower vases, surprising Estelle. Estelle urgently queries the maids about Theor's whereabouts, describing him as a five-year-old boy with black hair. Most maids deny having seen him until one steps forward, acknowledging that she witnessed him pushing over a vase and breaking it. Estelle is taken aback, seeking more details. The maid confirms the incident, stating that Theor seems startled by the broken vase and fled. Estelle expresses concern for Theor's well-being and inquiries about the reason behind his actions, but the maid remains uncertain. Estelle, shocked by the maid's admission, scolds her for allowing a child into the area housing the late emperor's collections without proper supervision. 
The maid apologizes, explaining that she had left the door open for cleaning. Estelle, although suspicious, decides to postpone further discussion until they locate Theor. She realizes that finding Theor is the priority and any resolution or clarification should come after ensuring his safety. In the midst of the situation, Kaizen and Theor arrive, prompting Estelle to address the Emperor. She explains that they were searching for Theor, and a maid claimed to have seen him breaking a vase. Theor, shocked, denies the accusation. Kaizen, questioning the circumstances, asks the maid when she witnessed the incident. The maid, flustered, mentions it was about an hour ago but seems uncertain. Kaizen, surprised by the contradiction, states that Theor was with him in the gardens at the time of the alleged incident. Estelle, seeking clarity, questions Theor about the events. Theor joyfully affirms Kaizen's account, expressing gratitude for the Emperor saving him. Kaizen encourages Theor to recount the incident to Estelle, aiming to resolve the conflicting stories and shed light on the truth. Theor, playing with the dog Vlin, realizes that the maid is missing and seeks Vlin's help. At that moment, a red-haired lady appears and inquires about Theor's presence. Theor, unfamiliar with her, questions her identity. The lady explains that Lady Estelle sent her and offers tasty snacks. However, Vlin, seemingly upset, gazes at the lady with displeasure, raising questions about the dog's unusual behavior. As Theor contemplates the situation, he recalls Estelle's advice about not following strangers in a place where many unfamiliar people are present. Reminded of Estelle's words, Theor politely informs the lady that he cannot follow her due to his aunt's instructions. The lady reassures him, claiming not to be a bad person. However, Vlin the dog begins barking at the lady and even bites her hand when she tries to beckon Theor. In a state of panic, Theor begins to run away and Vlin follows suit. The lady calls out desperately, but Theor, uncertain about his surroundings, wonders where he should go. Vlin, now leading the way in a different direction, prompts Theor to question its destination. Theor decides to follow Vlin, leading them to encounter Kaizen. Theor, relieved to find someone familiar, addresses Kaizen as sire and explains that a stranger had attempted to take him away. Kaizen, placing his hand on Vlin, acknowledges the dog's role in guiding Theor to safety. Reassuring Theor, Kaizen assures him that he is now in a secure place. Theor, overwhelmed with relief, tightly embraces Kaizen. Kaizen, comforting Theor, assures him that he is safe and that no one can take him away when he's with Kaizen. After checking if Theor has finished crying, Kaizen praises him for handling the situation well and promises a reward for defeating the evildoer. Theor, curious about the reward, listens as Kaizen outlines plans to visit the zoo, enjoy sweets and toys, and even attend the theater to watch a play. Theor expresses his excitement about plays and asks if there are also plays in the capital. Kaizen affirms and inquires if Theor likes them, to which Theor enthusiastically responds that he loves plays because they're fun. Kaizen, indulging Theor's interest, promises to take him to the biggest theater in the Empire. However, Kaizen suggests keeping the plan a secret from Estelle, anticipating her potential anger for making promises without consulting her. Thera agrees, assuring Kaizen that he can keep secrets. Thera reflects on the importance of keeping secrets, recalling both Estelle's emphasis on hiding his eye color and Grandpa's acknowledgement of the secret regarding Estelle being his mother. He marvels at the complexity of adult secrets, but reaffirms his fondness for Kaizen. Kaizen informs Estelle about their return and mentions that he has ordered the maids to gather to identify the culprit, alluding to the earlier incident with a broken vase. The maids are assembled and Kaizen questions them about the incident involving Theor. Sarvan informs Kaizen about the maids present or seen around at the time of the incident. Kaizen then turns to Theor and asks if he can recognize the maid who tried to take him. After scanning all the maids, Theor points to the maid with red hair, confirming her as the one. Estelle questions Theor's certainty, but he asserts that it was indeed her. The maid with red hair denies any wrongdoing, claiming that Theor must be mistaken. Another servant suggests that relying solely on Theor's testimony may not be sufficient. Kaizen, determined to get to the bottom of the situation, instructs the red-haired maid to show him her sleeve, as Theor mentioned the dog bit the culprit's sleeve. The maid confidently displays her sleeve, claiming it to be intact. Estelle, however, intervenes and suggests checking the back of the maid's skirt, pointing out the unusual cleanliness, implying that she might have changed her uniform. The red-haired maid appears surprised and reluctant at the request, adding an additional layer of suspicion to the unfolding investigation. Facing mounting evidence and pressured by Estelle and Kazan, the red-haired maid continues to deny any wrongdoing, claiming that today was just an ordinary day. Estelle, however, remains resolute in her pursuit of the truth and suggests a practical solution to verify the maid's innocence, she proposes a search of the maid's room by palace guards to check for any missing or tampered uniforms. This meticulous investigation would involve cross-referencing with the palace records to determine the exact number of uniforms issued to the maid. 
Estelle's attention to detail and insistence on a thorough examination underscore her commitment to uncovering the truth. Meanwhile, Kaizen, frustrated by the situation, demands an explanation for the maid's alleged attempt to kidnap Thera. The red-haired maid confesses that her actions were an attempt to conceal her accidental breaking of the vase. Another maid, presumably her friend, also admits to trying to assist in the cover-up. The guards, under Kaizen's orders, take both maids into custody. Despite their pleas for mercy, Kaizen remains firm in his decision. Estelle, realizing the severity of the situation, instructs Hannah to take Theor back to safety, reassuring him that she will join them shortly. Estelle expresses her gratitude to Kaizen for his intervention, acknowledging that without him the situation could have taken a dire turn, with Theor being wrongly blamed for the broken vase and potential additional consequences. Kaizen reassures her and advises her to leave, considering Theor's frightened state. Estelle appreciates Kaizen's concern and decides to head back. In her thoughts, she reflects on the precarious situation that could have unfolded without Kaizen's involvement. The red-haired maid's desperate attempt to cover up the vase incident raises suspicions for Estelle, who contemplates the possibility of someone orchestrating events behind the scenes or individuals collaborating in this scheme, determined not to let anyone escape. On the other hand, Theor excitedly recounts the surprise appearance of His Majesty, expressing his admiration for the Emperor. Estelle, pleased with Theora's joy, kisses his cheek and suggests taking a bath before dinner, promising him any food he desires. At that moment, a servant enters, opening the door and informing Lady Estelle about gifts sent by His Majesty for the young master. Theora, jumping with surprise from the bed, eagerly anticipates the gifts from the Emperor. Theora excitedly spots the gifts and eagerly selects one, asking Estelle if he can have it before dinner. Estelle agrees, but with the condition that he can only have one, and she instructs him to express gratitude to His Majesty. Estelle acknowledges the servant and thanks them on behalf of herself and Theor. When Theor also extends his thanks, Estelle playfully asks if she can have the chosen gift. Just then, Hannah arrives. Hannah skillfully styles Estelle's hair, and Estelle expresses her gratitude. Hannah reminisces about serving Estelle, noting that it feels like no time has passed since their last interaction. As Estelle prepares for the ball, a maid announces Lady Estelle's presence to Florine, who welcomes her. Lady Estelle introduces herself to Florine, and Florine, in turn, expresses surprise at the invitation for tea, wondering if there's a specific reason for the meeting. Estelle reveals to Lady Florine that there is a reason for their meeting, explaining that her nephew was the target of a kidnapping attempt the previous day. Lady Florine expresses concern for the boy's well-being, and Estelle reassures her that he is unharmed. Estelle shares that His Majesty, worried about the incident, has sent numerous sweets. This revelation surprises Lady Florine. Estelle, with a smile, suggests Lady Florine accept the sweets, stating that it would be her honor. She believes the treats would complement the dessert she had prepared, and Lady Florine agrees, requesting them to be served immediately. Estelle notes Lady Florine's recent move to the capital and inquires about it. Lady Florine explains that she resided in their manor until she came of age due to a weak constitution. Estelle expresses her joy at Lady Florine's improved health. However, Lady Florine, feeling remorseful, apologizes for the earlier incident involving her sister. She mentions her belief that her sister should have apologized properly. Estelle reassures Lady Florine, stating that she is fine, but then turns the conversation, expressing concern for Lady Florine herself. Estelle acknowledges her role in Lady Florine's sister being imprisoned and apologizes, but Lady Florine firmly asserts that her sister is solely responsible for her actions. Estelle reveals that her sister didn't like seeing Emperor Kazan paying attention to her, and that her sister has always had a fondness for him. Estelle then questions if her presence bothers Lady Florine. In response, Lady Florine asks if Estelle plans to become Empress again, to which Estelle denies any such intention, stating that she neither could nor wants to. Lady Florine, seeking to avoid animosity, suggests that there's no need for them to be enemies if Estelle doesn't have such ambitions. Estelle expresses her relief, stating that she is glad Lady Florine has Emperor Kaizen's attention and sees no rivalry between them. Lady Florine, lost in thought, mentions having had a doll resembling Estelle as a child. Estelle responds by pointing out that if Lady Florine truly believed she wasn't a threat, she wouldn't have traveled all the way to assess the situation. She concludes that this must be the real Lady Florine. Lady Florine acknowledges that Estelle cannot be Empress, nor does she desire to be, but suggests that circumstances can change unexpectedly drawing a parallel to her own unexpected position six years ago. She admits that she came to see for herself Estelle's relationship with Emperor Kaizen. With a smile, Lady Florine reassures Estelle that her apology was sincere and mentions that she has looked up to Estelle since she was young. Estelle appreciates the compliment and Lady Florine adds that they have met once before, though Estelle might not remember. 
Estelle asserts to Lady Florine that Emperor Kaizen has no affection for her and clarifies that what he feels is not love but guilt, emphasizing that Kaizen doesn't understand the concept of love. Lady Florine expresses trust in Estelle's words and Estelle takes her leave, exchanging pleasantries and agreeing to have tea again sometime. As Estelle leaves, she reflects on Lady Florine, recognizing her as a formidable opponent but concluding that she couldn't be behind the flawed kidnapping attempt. Estelle is determined to find the real culprit, intending to bring them to justice after the ball. Nanny informs Lady Florine that she gathered information about the former empress, though there wasn't much. She highlights a notable detail. A maid at Marin Castle overheard Theor the boy calling Lady Estelle Mama. Florine questions the significance, mentioning that she also called Lady Estelle Mama when she was little. Nanny acknowledges the similarity but implies that the mention of Mama might be particularly unusual in Theor's case. Lady Florine contemplates the situation, particularly focusing on the Lindale berries that Lady Estelle didn't consume. Deciding to be thorough, she instructs further investigation into the boy's parentage. The next morning, Lady Estelle anticipates the day when she can request permission to send Theor back. Amidst the maid's bustling preparations, Lady Estelle acknowledges the elaborate efforts, realizing it exceeds her expectations. As the maids express admiration for her beauty, Lady Estelle commends their efforts and takes her leave prepared for the significant day ahead.